hey guys Ogs from the US welcome to the channel and thank you for watching in this video I'm going to do my match preview between Crystal Palace and Chelsea Football Club it's gonna be on Tuesday it's gonna be away but it doesn't matter because it's going to be played in an empty stadium but before anything you know what to do please subscribe to the channel like the video comment down below share follow me on social media and let's keep the conversation going anyways crystal palace against chelsea football club what can i say about this game well it's kind of a boogie game for chelsea football club but hey i've been saying this for every team in the premier league right every team can beat chelsea at the moment and on their day they can make things very complicated for chelsea football club we've seen it in the past many many times so we have to be careful because it could be another banana skin kind of game and we just won the game against uh, watford a good victory but we have to be careful not to lose another game from now because we are going to be out of the champions league spot anyways chelsea are just recovering from the last game on saturday because there is nothing really you can do in three days okay so they had like uh, some ice bath on sunday and monday is gonna be just uh, light training tactics and all that nothing really physical because there is a high risk of injuries and all that so uh it's a tough moment for players when you play every three days that's why uh the five subs are going really to help players because you can uh, you can twist your team a little bit just to keep everybody fresh but if you don't have a strong bench and then it's useless because you're gonna have to play the same players you don't have other choice and that is my question for you guys if you have to rest somebody in the game against palace who who are you going to bench just to give him some rest i think people are very quick on condemning frank lampard blaming other people when something happened but the same people can't even prevent can you imagine if uh, frank lampard rested ngolo kante and we ended up by losing or drawing the game against wasfall everybody was going to get on frank lampard and say ngolo kante doesn't need any rest because he's from a long break and everybody is fresh right now that he's injured everybody got on frank lampard saying that oh engolo kante needed rest you see what i'm trying to say so it's a lose-lose situation for a manager everything that you would do is going to be used against you so it is what it is frank lampard is paid to make decisions but for me if i have to rest few players i will rest christian Pulisic aspiliqueta and william but the question is can we really afford resting players in this moment at chelsea we have a very poor poor uh bench and cover is injured kante is out you know how can you afford to rest players tomori also still injured so it's a very very tough situation for frank lampard i'm saying this to help you think a little bit outside the box sometimes don't just be reactionary and start getting on people uh, without using any common sense. does christian Pulisic need a rest absolutely yes can we afford giving christian Pulisic a rest no why because he's the heart of chelsea football club at the moment if we want to make it to the champions league we need to beat crystal palace 
if you want to sign Kai Harvard, one of the conditions is that we need to make it to the Champions League. So you need your best player play that game against uh, Crystal Palace. But I would like to see Christian Pulisic maybe start the game and then take him off at some point to give him some rest. So my lineup would be Kepa Arisabalaga, Aspiliqueta, Rhys James, Zuma, Christensen, and in the midfield, I will go with Barkley, Gilmore, and Mount. The attack, I will go with Christian Pulisic, Olivier Giroud, and William. And like I said, we have to proceed with caution. We have to be very careful. So I will be very careful with Christian Pulisic, Aspiliqueta, and William. Try really to give them some rest at some point during the game. Bench them and bring them on at some point or start them and bring them off at some point, if that makes sense. So if you don't want to agree with me and then if something happen, don't complain and blame Frank Lampard. Before you make those false accusations and blame Frank Lampard for no reason, you have to think outside the box. Sometimes Lampard's hands are tied because he doesn't have any choice. He is obligated to, to, to provide us with some result. We need the result. And sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? Let's now talk about the opposition team, Crystal Palace. We are going to meet some familiar figures. Gary Cahill, the ex-Chelsea captain, the luckiest captain in the world. The guy won the Champions League only six months after signing for Chelsea Football Club. And from there, man, he won it all. He won everything with Chelsea Football Club. I'm happy that he's happy playing week in and week out at Palace. Another ex-Chelsea player is Patrick Van Hanolt. Remember him? Yeah, the Dutch guy. Well, it didn't work out for him at Chelsea Football Club. He was sent on loan here and there. But I'm also happy that he's having a good time at Palace. But now, tomorrow, we are coming for you, boys. <laughs> Anyways, in the first leg at the bridge, we beat them 2-0. A goal from Tammy Abraham and another one from Christian Pulisic. I hope they can reproduce the same performance and we can get three points. But it's not going to be easy because, like I said, Palace are a boogie team for Chelsea Football Club. Every time when a small team play against Chelsea, they turn to be on their prime. It's like playing a prime Barcelona under Guardiola. The man to watch, Christian Mbeteke. Yeah, I know you're going to tell me he hasn't scored for the last 100 years. But I tell you what, the guy loves to score against Chelsea Football Club. Jordan Ayew, that guy is scoring goals, you know. I think that is this is his best season at Palace so we have to be careful and Wilfred Zaha mm -hmm. that defense need to be very careful because Zaha can give you hard time on his day the first uh, leg at the bridge Rhys James put him in his pocket Wow that was the best performance from Rhys James that I've never seen before. He put Wilfried Zaha in his pocket and Zaha couldn't do anything. We had a very comfortable game, I remember that. So hopefully we can do the same in the second uh, leg. My score prediction is 3-1 to Chelsea. <laughs> 3 is the magic number, right? And 1 you know what we do in the defense sometimes. I believe in Zuma and Christensen, but I'm not sure about Kepa Arisa Balaga. And it's going to take time for us to 
to cope with that defense it's not going to be fixed overnight it's going to take time so we are going to concede one goal but we will score three so it's all good right anyways guys let me know what will be your lineup and your score prediction think outside the box and see you in the next one